power please listen to this one because here is where the administration of your authority and your power the zenith of your dominion is at the mercy of this knowledge the knowledge of his power psalm 63 and verse 2 halakatosiata Verse 1 says, O oh Lord, give us verse 1. Let's do 1 and 2. O oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. So he's seeking God. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Why? Verse 2. To see thy power. Not just to see your face. Not just to know your ways. But now to see your power. God's power can be seen and thy glory. So I have seen thee in the sanctuary. You can know his power. Matthew 22 and verse 29. Here's what Jesus said. Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. What is the word err? You will walk in error. You will walk in confusion. You will walk in defiance and in deviation to God's preset pattern. When you do not know his ways, like I taught earlier, and you do not know his power, that means the power of God can keep a man in the will of God. In fact, the assignment of the power of God is to bring all things in alignment with the will of God. I have taught you here that outside of the will of God, the power of God has no assignment. The assignment of the power of God is to bring all things into the will of God. The power of God only stops working when triggered by faith. It only stops working when that issue, that matter, or that person has come into perfect alignment with the will of God. So when you see a sick person and you release the healing power, the healing anointing, what is the assignment of the healing power? The healing power does not, it doesn't just come there to heal the person. It scans that man's life and sees what aspect of his health is inconsistent with the will of God. And like a drug in your body, it begins to correct depending on the dimension and the gravity of the power released. It can bring you into perfect alignment. Do you understand what I'm sharing with you? You want to know God? You have not truly known God as far as it is given to us if you do not know his power. Ephesians 1, 18. Hmm. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Paul is speaking to the church in Ephesus. This Paul was a powerful man. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Watch all the things he wants them to know. That ye may know, number one, what is the hope of his calling. Number two, what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints read 19 if you're a christian please ready one to read what is the third thing he wants us to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power let me stretch it to 21 verse 20 that mighty power that was exerted which he wrought in christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places 21 far above principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but even that which is to come do you know the implication of obeying paul's prayer or praying that paul's prayer becomes your prayer let me tell you the truth there is no weakness for the believer who knows the power of God. Mm -mm. And this is beyond the realm of miracles and signs and wonders. There are infinite possibilities that can flow through the life of a believer. 
Paul is saying, I see your weakness in terms of your weakness. You are not able to be effective witnesses. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. The Bible says, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. When it has to do with being a witness, it is good to know God's character. It is good to know God's ways. But in the face of curses and yokes, and the arsenals of darkness, the gates of hell that wants to prevail over God's people. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to know his power. You need to know his power. It is the revelation of God's power that brings you into unquestionable dominion. First Samuel 17, 44 to 47. The story that I started earlier on. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, Goliath now, and I will give thy flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Look at the reply of a young boy who had encountered the power of God. Then David said to the Philistine, and ladies and gentlemen, today that Philistine can be anything that speaks to you. It can be sickness, it can be life, it can be limitations. David replied the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. We can spend all night teaching what this name is. The Lord of hosts. The literal Hebrew translation is the captain of the angel army. Some versions will say the 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 captain of the angel army if you read verse, verse, versions like um um maybe the message or new living translation they will give you greater perspective as to this it says beautiful i come to you message now in the name of god of the angel armies do you know what that means it is an office that every president has in nigeria we call it the grand commander you see that now that status that is given a civilian, even if he becomes president. You are in charge of the entire armed forces. And it is only at your final command that war is executed or prohibited. So he say, I come to you in the name. There is something I know about God and his power that when he gives a command, you are dead. It is in that name I come. Let's finish the scripture. Back to KJV 45. 1 Samuel 17, 45. Now you understand? I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Watch this. Reading 46 now. This day, this gentleman is not just prophesying. He's speaking from the abundance of his revelation about the God who gave him the bear, the God who gave him the lion, that he tore the lion and the bear. If you meet a bear in the forest, run as you pray. Run as you pray. Don't pray alone and stand there. Run as you pray because you most likely may not survive. Those animals are vicious. And worst is a lion. Do you climb a tree to be safe? Do you jump into the river to be safe? Number one, what will even take you there? That's what we must probe. What took you there? Most likely disobedience would have taken you there. hallelujah are we together this day the lord will deliver thee who else in the bible made this kind of bold statement bible knowledge shadrach meshach and abednego those three young boys when they stood before nebuchadnezzar staring as that idol that 90 feet statue made of gold they said oh king we've been taught to honor but in this matter we will not respect you on that our god is able to deliver us and he will but that even if he does not deliver us for sure bowing down to you <clears throat> yesterday i was tired and i was just resting in the living room um just for a while and then i saw this children's cartoon and that was super book and it was that story i decided to watch it preparing for this sermon i said thank you jesus and you see the children's cartoon you you i mean you needed to see what the power of god did in that cartoon rubbish that furnace for nothing and the, the fourth man who was in that fire said oh thou fourth man please stand with me oh 
tomorrow as I teach. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's finish that scripture. We're reading to 47. I hope you are learning. It says, I will give, he's prophesying to Goliath now. I will smite thee and take your head from you. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day to the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Not just that there is a mighty young boy who is standing to face a giant. It says, and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, but the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. There are many mountains and many battles you will confront in your life as a believer. Many of you are standing before them now. Financial battles, marital battles, health battles. Are we together? And all kinds of things. In these days that there are mysterious devilish sicknesses. Someone just wakes up in the morning and you feel pain here. You just go to the hospital thinking they will tell you you didn't rest well. And they'll say, ah, we don't like what we are seeing in this machine. When did you start having this pain? He said, just last week. Say this is already stage two in the name of jesus the revelation of god's power will terminate everything my father has not planted in your body <laughs> hallelujah to know the power of god to know the power of god you cannot bear witness to the truth you cannot prove a god that you have not seen and known his power when he told moses i am that i am he did not stop there he told him he said all right here's what will happen moses what are you holding in your hand he said a road he said cast it down when moses threw it down it became a serpent and moses moved away from it he said draw nigh don't be afraid pick it from the tail and moses picked it and it became a rod and he said, hold this rod wherewith you would walk signs and wonders. Put your hand in your bosom. Brought it out and it was leprous. Put it back. Brought it out and it was normal. That means anything you see Pharaoh doing, don't be afraid. I have used your own body to act out my power to you. Moses was on his way. He went to knock. Thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, look at this stupid guy. You ran away for 40 years to the wilderness. And now you are back looking like somebody who was rejected with some careless message that the god of the hebrews you think we are stupid people in egypt moses said i don't have time to waste discussing with you he threw his rod on the ground pharaoh looked at him and said shame on you if this is what you brought to make me bring god's people out mm -mm. janus jambas bring your rod and they threw their rods and when he became a serpent do you know how if you don't know god well when the devil does what you think God can do, you will now run away. Because that thing was a replica of what God could do. So you tell somebody, only God prospers. And they say, okay, I'm going to the harbor list in open. Let's check ourselves by December. By December, you come, you are prosperous, and the person is prosperous too. And he says, so what is the difference? You need to know God enough. There are nine plagues, ten plagues. Just because you saw one, does that mean that is all there is a plague that pharaoh and his wizards cannot reproduce after nine plagues and stubborn pharaoh said it's not enough god said i know what to do they know the implication of firstborns don't worry allow them and that night the angel of death swept over egypt they woke up with a lamentation the firstborns were all dead when you study now uh, you study these things with caution don't just go and read something that will make you start seeing spirits. Are we together now? When you are exploring extra biblical materials, you do it with maturity and with wisdom. Are we together now? A believer who just got born again, there are books you should not expose yourself into. You would destroy yourself and you would dwindle your faith. But when you study, even if it's Egyptian cytology, you know that they dedicated their firstborns to God. There was a mystery of the strength of Egypt that was shrouded in their firstborns. You could kill all their children, go ahead, but not their firstborns. So when God was visiting the firstborns, there was something that happened there. And at the end of it, Pharaoh said, go. Give them gold, give them anything. Let them go, let them go. Please leave this place. And as soon as they left, he came to pursue them again. And this time around, God made, he did something that pharaoh wondered the red sea opened and when they stepped into it the red sea buried them completely
if the Red Sea can bury, can bury Pharaoh, there is nothing it cannot bury. Every spirit and every manifestation of darkness that keeps saying, I will keep you bound. Your children will join you here. Your grandchildren will join you here. In the name of Jesus, the same way that sea opened Hitha and Titha and buried Pharaoh and his armies, everything that is not by my God, from my God, and with the permission of my God, I decree and declare, let it be buried forever. Now you understand David Dam's song. Only a sure will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. 